Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to today's episode where we are going to be discussing all things healing and manifestation. And so if you don't already know, I'm Alexandra Trev and I help you heal and say yes to the things that you really want in life, your soul satiating goals. And we do this by talking a lot about energetics, talking about healing, talking about cleaning up our own inner world in order to optimize our experience with our external world. So our inner world is really our inner child, our nervous system, our emotional experience that we're having on the inside. And our external world is how we interact with the world around us and what we strive for, what we desire, and what we seek to experience in different categories like our relationships, our body goals, our money goals, our purpose goals, our creative goals, our career goals, things of that nature. So today I want to talk a little bit about the power of the present moment. And if you have seen or listened to or watched my previous episode on the three steps of manifestation, I talk about how healing is the first step. And the second step is about presence and cultivating a sense of gratitude. And the third step is about manifesting, which is really all of the sexy things online on the internet when it comes to visualizing your highest self and acting as if and using chat GPT as a means to journal and ask it to create your ideal life and things like that. And nothing is wrong with that. It's amazing to embody and visualize and be in the energy of what Neville Goddard calls the wish fulfilled. So the desire that the desire that we seek is feels a certain way. It vibrates a certain way. It moves a certain way. There's a certain essence to it. And when we live in that state, we communicate with the quantum field in order to collapse time to achieve our goals faster so that we're able to manifest and achieve what we want in the external world by mastering the energy of our internal world. So it doesn't just come down to blood, sweat, and tears, but more so, of course, we take action, but more so mastering our energy is how we speed up those results. But in that episode, if you haven't listened to it, go back to it. It'll be a good predecessor to what we're talking about today. I talk about how we really hyper-focus on the manifestation instead of Phase one, which is healing, or phase two, which is being in the present moment. And I go deeper into what it means to heal and how healing involves both our inner child and our nervous system. And I really dissect a little bit more about phase one in the manifestation journey, which is healing. And today I want to talk a little bit more about phase two. And so for those of you who don't know, I discussed in my past two episodes a lot of things I've been exploring and working on after healing from a toxic relationship, being in that cycle of narcissistic abuse and cleaning up my own side of the street about how I played a role in perpetuating that and allowing and attracting that into my experience. And so I am walking on this journey with you guys. I am in a a deeper dimension of where I've been in the past when I've done nervous system stuff of when I've did I've when I've done inner child healing stuff and I've been there before but now I'm back again and I'm I'm experiencing that and healing that on a deeper layer because of this really unhealthy relationship that I was in for so long that I allowed myself to be in for so long and really taking trying to take ownership out of out of just identifying as a victim to the circumstance because of course if you're undergoing abuse it's really confusing it's really disorienting because you feel like it's always your fault you, the guilt is always placed on you but when you're a little bit removed from it and you start to understand that there is a piece of me that attracted this and accepted this into my reality, 
that opens up the healing gates even further because you're like, whoa. And so as I am continuing on my healing journey, I'm sharing that with you guys and I'm sharing my insights from the past, from my past healing journey, in addition to what I'm going through now. And my healing journey really started in 2017. Um, and you could say that's when my spiritual awakening began. But I really worked backwards where I was focusing on the law of attraction and manifesting and all this stuff instead of doing the deep, deep work. And as I mentioned, I dissect a bit more about what that deep work requires and entails in my previous episode on the three phases of manifestation going into phase one that is healing. And today we're going to talk a bit more about phase two, which is the present moment. Because there comes a point when you're not debilitated by sadness or by anxiety or by despair or by anger. There comes a point where your emotions, the tidal wave, just becomes a normal wave. And it becomes something a bit more tolerable. It becomes something that's like, oh, this isn't fun I don't like having these emotional flashbacks. I don't like feeling this pit in my stomach. I don't like waking up with a tightness in my chest and this sensation of anxiousness and worry, but it's no longer at a 10 out of 10. Like, oh, maybe it's a five out of 10 or maybe it's a four out of 10 or maybe it's even a seven out of 10, but it's no longer a debilitating somatic experience. Because a lot of the times when we come out of abusive relationships or when we have so much pent up trauma and wounding and unprocessed emotions from the accumulation of our life that has never been addressed, we start to have these symptoms where we feel debilitated in our body because all of these emotions are trying to get out this grief, this shame, this anger, this sorrow, this unworthiness, these really heavy, heavy, intense emotions and they're communicating with us through the pit in our chest, through the aching in our heart, through the, the shakiness in our bones. Like what we're feeling physically is a representation of what's happening emotionally. And then that is a deeper invitation to assess and get curious about ourselves spiritually. Because where we are spiritually which is like the deepest form of our energy body and our identity is then going to infiltrate our emotions. And then it's going to infiltrate our, what we feel, feel and experience in our physical body. And so there comes a point on the healing journey where the anxiety is a bit more manageable, the fear, the worry, the doubt, the sorrow, the frustration, the confusion, the anger is no longer a 10 out of 10, but it might be down to a six or a seven out of 10. And when that happens, there starts to become these moments of hope or these glimpses of positivity or these remembrances of like, oh my gosh, there's life outside of this vortex of hell that I've been in. And they're not really sustained. It's not all day long. You're skipping and, you know, throwing flowers out the basket and, doing the zippity doo dah dance, but you start to remember, you start to have glimpses, you start to have moments of optimism, of hope. It's really hope. You feel hope again. And when you're on the journey, when you start to feel the moments of hope and you start to feel the glimpses of maybe it doesn't have to be like this, maybe it could be better, Your energy starts to expand and starts to open up to a new phase of the healing, which starts to become about savoring the present moment. And so I'm not saying that the deep work of the inner child healing, of the therapy, of the addressing your patterns, of reliving childhood, of understanding how our needs aren't met, of doing the deep nervous system, somatic, screaming, shaking, crying. I'm not saying that that stops. That still continues. We still sit and practice. 
to help regulate our nervous system. We still dig deep and speak to our inner child with loving kindness. We're still doing all of that deep work that I discussed in that other episode. But it no longer needs to be just our primary lifeline. We're starting to shift in the evolution of the healing journey because we're not in a simple state of despair any longer. There is a bit of breadcrumbs of hope. And when we feel these breadcrumbs of hope, it becomes an invitation to start to interact with the present moment deeper. Because when we're in that, I call it the red zone, when we're in that red zone of healing, when we're in the red zone of anxiety, depression, despair, confusion, and a deep nervous system response state where we're just frozen and paralyzed or we're avoiding and disassociated, disassociating, or we're in a fight, aggressive, argumentative kind of phase. When we're in that, we're stuck in replaying and revisiting the past or grieving and being fearful about the future. And so we're not living in the present moment. We're not living in reality. We're living in a haunted house inside of our head, which is just a trauma response. That's okay. That happens. It's just the awareness of like, oh my God, I'm replaying the really messed up shit that was said to me. Or, oh my God, I'm grieving the future that was never really going to happen for us. Or, oh my gosh, this one thing went wrong. So now I'm making it mean that all these other things are going to go wrong. And it's that process of catching ourselves, of catching ourselves in that downward spiral. But it's acknowledging that when we're in that red zone, that despair, that anxiety, that depression, that confusion, all of the doom and the gloom and the heaviness that we're really not in the present moment. And it's not until we start to experience glimpses of hope and glimpses of optimism that we really have the capacity to even begin to interact with the present moment. Think about it if there's someone's like bleeding out, someone has a gunshot wound, right? We can't look at the gunshot wound and what is actually happening with the tissues and with the structures and with the arteries and, and all of that stuff until we just stop the bleeding and make sure that the person's vitals are okay. Right. In this analogy, being stuck in the red zone, being stuck in that anxious, like really intense and emotionally heavy place is just stopping the bleeding. We just have to stop the bleeding. We have to make sure that like blood pressure is okay. We have to make sure the person has oxygen. We just have to stop the bleeding, right? Like it's an emergency situation. And then once we do that, once we get the bleeding under the control, then we can go into the present moment of like, okay, what is actually happening in the bones, in the tissue, in the muscles? What structures did the bullet hit so that we know where to do surgery or where to in place an injection and like, how can we properly assess the scene in the present moment? That's phase two of healing. Once we stop the bleeding, once we calm down the anxiety, calm down the nervous system in my analogy. And then phase three in the gunshot wound metaphor would be, okay, now let's do rehab. Now let's start to embody and practice living in the end result of being able to walk again and run again and perform all of our functions right? Which in our kind of work, that would be phase three of manifesting and visualizing and all that stuff. But we have to stop the bleeding. We have to do the healing work before we're able to assess the scene of the present moment. Like you can't even see where the bullet is. If the whole entire leg is covered in blood, we got to clean it up. We got to get the situation under control. Like we can't even experience and have gratitude for the present moment until our anxiety and our nervous system is calmed down. So we got to go a step at a time. But when it comes to actually entering phase two and actually learning to embrace the present moment, and we know it's time to do that when we start to feel the glimpses of hope, the glimpses of optimism, and that anxiety, that inner turmoil is no longer at a 10 out of 10, That's how we know it's time. Okay, it's time. I'm going to keep doing my healing work. I'm going to keep 
mastering my self-talk. I'm going to keep knowing how to speak to myself with loving kindness. I'm going to learn to self-soothe. I'm going to learn to meet my own needs. I'm going to get in my body and feel the intensity of these emotions that are not fun, regulate the shit out of my nervous system, slowly reduce the bleeding, slowly reduce my own emotional symptoms from a 10 out of 10 to a 7 out of 10 to a 6 out of 10. And then I'm going to start to feel those glimpses. I'm like, oh, like maybe life can be good. Maybe life can be exciting. These little things, these little moments. And when that starts happening, that's our cue. That's how we know, okay, now it's time to start practicing embodying phase two of this healing journey, which is redeveloping my relationship with the present moment. Instead of being in this haunted house in my head of all of the messed up shit that's happened, of having this CPTSD, you know, this always being on edge, always looking for a problem, always assuming things are going to go wrong and this hypervigilance and eggshell life from whatever past messed up thing or things that we've experienced recently or growing up or whenever. And we start to invite in the present moment and what it really means to develop a relationship with the present moment is like, how can I make what I'm doing right now the most yummy? And I used to hate that term. I used to be so annoyed when coaches online would say the word yummy. I was like, ew. But I I like that term now because where for me, how I have the most like delicious experience with the present moment is when I use the two words cozy and yummy. And I especially mean, I especially, especially mean rewriting our relationship with the present moment when we're alone. So I think this has been my experience. I think we have more capacity to experience the present moment in a wider range of experience and emotions when we're with other people because we're playing with other energies right if we're with someone that's really high energy we can be vibing off of their energy if we're with someone that's really funny we can be vibing off of their energy I mean if we're with someone that's really a dark cloud wet blanket we can also be feeling that but that's not really the direction we want to go if we're in our healing era we want to be a yes to people that are on the lighter side of thing that people that make us feel expanded and open and safe and secure and curious and not contracted and heavy and questioning and full of worry. But it's a lot easier to, you know, tap into that laughter or that enthusiasm or that creativity or that sexiness or whatever the energy that the other person brings because we can play off of their energy. So it's a bit easier, again, in my experience, to be in the present moment in a variety of different ways when we're in a group setting or when we're with another person. Because we have this external source to cue us and to help us and to invite us into whatever energy that person is bringing. Now, of course, there are boundaries around that. As I previously alluded to, if someone doesn't feel like a yes internally, then just it's not it right now. Or ever, we can just say, okay, this person doesn't need to be in my future anymore, or I need to have boundaries around my relationship with this person. Sometimes when you're healing, you need a bit more gentleness, you need a bit more softness. And sometimes certain people's energy can be more intense or more high energy, and you just don't have the capacity to be around that quite yet. That's fine. That's a different conversation around boundaries. I really need to do a further episode around boundaries. But When I say rewriting your relationship with the present moment, I really mean when you're alone. So like, how do you engage and interact with your present moment when you're alone? Because when you're alone, that's when you are cleaning up your own energy. That's when you are tweaking and refining your energy body. That's when you are doing the work 
of taking your power back and saying, how do I interact with life when it's just me? Because man, my relationship with life, with source, with God, with universe is right. Me and that, that's when we start to master our own inner energetics and have more creative control over our future and what we experience in our next chapter. But in order to have that creative control, in order to be a master of our own inner energetics, we have to be able to find our center, find our groundedness in the present moment when we don't have the luxury of playing off of someone's, someone else's energy. So it's when we're doing the boring things like the dishes or brushing our teeth or showing up for answering emails or making our bed or getting ready for bed or getting ready for the gym, or just in the little tiny, tiny moments with ourselves, with our work, with our craft, with our responsibilities, that we then have the opportunity to rewrite our relationship with the present moment that's going to deepen our healing to the point to where We are able to live in that higher frequency, in that more expanded state, in a place of more creative control for our manifestations. And the way in which I have done this, the way in which I have found the most helpful to setting an intention and to holding myself accountable of like, How do I take back my personal power and lean further into those glimpses of optimism and hope by developing a healthier relationship with the present moment is I go back to those two feelings of cozy and of yummy. Like, how can I make this the most yummy? How can I make this the most cozy? So your homework for today is going to be to think about the two or three feelings or one even that you want to feel when you're just doing the boring shit, when you're just doing the basics, when you're just doing the responsible things that you must, when you're doing your due diligence for being a human, for being a professional, for being a someone that has responsibilities as an adult, how can we do it through the sensation of how we want to experience the present moment and how I want to experience the present moment is cozy and yummy. Then that's me. So for example, how I'm doing this right now is I'm sitting on this lush, white, texturized, soft blanket. And then behind me is a sheepskin. And so that has a nice texture to it. And then next to me right here is an evergreen candle. I'm like Christmas year round kind of person. So even though it's November, I'm like, happy Honda days, everybody. So I've got that evergreen white fur candle going next to me. I also have a heating pad behind me. So I have, I'm also a Taurus. So, you know, we, we really like comfort and we like cozy. So like I said, whatever your two words are, however you want to experience those two things or those two sensations is going to be completely yours. But for me, how I work to enhance my relationship with the present moment, how I work to enhance my ability to feel gratitude and to feel more light and hopeful while I'm doing my things throughout the day. I was just sitting here calling lawyers for a speeding ticket that I got, right? But I, I'm trying to do that with the lighting that make, that feels the best with the all the different textures and smells and everything that I just mentioned. How can I make my present moment the most cozy and the most yummy? So I want you to think about your two words one, two, three words of how you want to feel in the present moment. And then how can you add that to the way in which you take action as you're starting to develop a healthier relationship with the present moment? And whatever your two words are, whatever your two, one, two, three, I'm just saying two words because I have two words, cozy and yummy. Whatever your words are, your adjectives are for the sensations of how you want to feel What it comes back to is that's going to be the most nourishing for you right now. So whatever words you pick, maybe you pick the word like playful and you want everything to feel more playful. That's, that's the medicine you need. That's most nourishing for you. What's most nourishing for me is to feel cozy and to feel yummy. And 
And this really goes back to the ultimate feeling of my manifestations. So like my manifestations, like my dream home, my dream apartment, the dream city I live in, it feels very cozy and it feels very yummy to me. It feels very like I'm in a cave, very historic. It has a lot of character. How I foresee myself feeling living in the next version of my dream is with a lot of coziness and with a lot of yumminess. So for me, I really lean towards New York. I lean towards London. That's where I feel those things, for example. But for someone else who maybe wants to feel more peaceful or more sexy, right? They might have different words that I have. They might be drawn more to places like Malibu or Miami, right? Very, very different energy. There's beach energy there. There's city energy there. There is luxury energy there, but very different. But those places for me, like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I did spend seven years in LA, but nothing wrong with those places. But that is so not cozy for me. So not cozy. Like, nah, I can't be at the beach. Not cozy. A lot of elements going on, a lot of things, a lot of sand, right? I want to be in like a candlelit room with interior brick and like light jazz playing, just different energy, no right or wrong. The point is how you want to experience the present moment right now, whatever your words are, if it's cozy, if it's yummy, if it's sexy, if it's peaceful, if it's playful, whatever, however you start to rewrite your experience with your present moment as you take action right here, right now, that is also an indicator and some energetic evidence of you, if you will, of the manifestations that you're calling in. So there's going to be some sort of connection to the goals that you want to achieve, to the community that you want to build, to the career that you want to have, to the type of environment that you want to live in, to the city you want to live in, how you want to feel in your manifestations in the future is also related to how you want to feel right here, right now. And so that's why it's really important that we go through this manifestation journey in a one, two, three process. One is the healing. My last episode was more on that. that. Two is being in the present moment and cultivating gratitude. And three is ultimately manifesting. But we've got to go one, two, three. We can't go three, two, one. We can't go one, three, two or two, three, one. It's just, it's got to be in order for it to happen effectively. That's why a lot of people that have been super successful in the manifestation category as well, it's like after they hit rock bottom, after they learned to be okay with nothing, after they learned to heal, after they regulated their nervous system when their life was in chaos, and then they started to have gratitude for the present moment, the little things, right? They started to redefine how they want to feel. Oh, I, this is cozy and this is yummy, whether it's, if it's eating like a $2 McDonald's in the backseat of a car and like, how can you find the magic in the way that you want to experience magic? For me, it's cozy and yummy. How can we find that magic right here, right now, when we're doing the boring things, when it doesn't look glamorous on the outside, when we're simply catering to our own responsibilities with where we are at right here, right now. And when we learn to do that, then it becomes more natural, more easy, more in flow to jump to the stage that is manifestation. And so one more thing I want to add on this is that in order to effectively build that relationship with the present moment, we also have to practice being present. Because we've been so caught up in healing and assessing the past and analyzing the future and setting our goals and being in the haunted house of anxiety in our mind that we don't know what it feels like to just sit in the present moment. And this is why like meditation and breath work is so powerful and important. So when we learn, whether you start with one minute and then you work to three minutes and then to five minutes and then to 10 minutes, when we learn to sit in stillness with our breath we practice what it feels like to be in the present moment. We practice what it feels like to get into our body when we've been numbing out with food or vices or Netflix or our phones or 
the gym or hyperstimulation. Part of learning to cultivate the sense of yumminess or coziness or whatever it is, is also learning to be still, which is really hard for a lot of us. So in addition to your homework of your two words, what are your two words that you want to feel in the present moment? And how can you set that intention and take action accordingly when you go to show up for your daily life? And how can you do that consistently over time and hold that energy is also adding in moments of stillness. I don't care what you have going on. You can find five minutes, you know, sit and work and the bathroom if you have to for five extra minutes and sit there and breathe and just sit there and breathe and practice what it feels like to be still. So I did a 10 minute practice today and yesterday I did a five minute practice and the day before I did a three minute practice. Just meet yourself where you're at. It's okay. But just knowing that practicing getting in stillness is also part of the phase two work of being in the present moment. Okay, so that is all for today. A little bit of a shorter episode about expanding on the healing journey and evolving to that next phase of, okay, once, you know, we've stopped the bleeding, we've calmed down the 911 situation in our emotional body. And we're able to feel a semblance of hope, of faith, of openness, of curiosity again, instead of just being like, oh my God, I can't even function. I can't do anything. Once we've evolved into that place, then we start to play around with sitting in small moments of stillness, knowing that our job is to be in the present moment. And the way in which we do that is by how do I want to feel in the present moment and how can I add those feelings to the most mundane and the boring tasks that I already have to do as being an adult? How can I make it more cozy, make it more yummy, define what your two words are? And I'm really curious to know what you guys come up with. So shoot me an email, send me a DM, Alexandra Trev on Instagram and hello at alexandratrevison.com for email. I'd love to know what two words you came up with. One, two, three words, whatever feels correct in your system. And as always, to go deeper into this work, there are free resources. I have a nervous system resource in there called Somatic Soul with the link in my bio. I also have a free resource on inner child healing, combining the work of our inner child with our nervous system with the link in my bio there. And if you have any questions at all about that, let me know. This is the type of work I do in my one-on-one client with my one-on-one clients in my one-on-one containers, the inner child work, the healing work, the nervous system work, the cultivating the sense of presence, the taking all of this theory and all of this information and this understanding of the mechanics of healing and manifestation and applying it to your individualistic situation, where you are at in your life, what you have been dealing with, your trauma your anxieties, your obstacles, your barriers, and your goals. We apply all of this directly and uniquely to you. So there's a short application for that also with the link in my bio. And of course, any questions, reach out to me directly. All right, so you got this. Keep going and I will see you guys next time.